All right, guys, let's see what we need to know about cellular respiration. Okay, so we got uh, four questions here. These questions will show up again at the end of the video where you can uh, try to see if you can answer them yourself or we could do it right now. Um, principal source of energy for cellular respiration. Uh, we definitely want to know that. Um, glucose molecules are broken down into two smaller pyruvate molecules due to the process of blank. Uh, the burning sensation of the muscles when undergoing anaerobic respiration is due to what? And the process by which electrons are released and gathered by acceptor molecules is the blank. All right, so we definitely want to focus on those questions, and we will cover that uh, here in this video. Okay, so to get started, uh, cell respiration is overall an oxidative reaction, meaning it loses electrons and loses hydrogen. Respiration is the biochemical process in which the cells of an organism obtain energy by combining oxygen and glucose, resulting in the release of carbon dioxide, water, and ATP, which is the currency of energy in cells. Uh, cell respiration includes both aerobic and anaerobic phases. Nutrients that are commonly used by animal and plant cells in respiration include sugar, amino acids, and fatty acids. But the most common oxidizing agent providing most of the chemical energy is molecular oxygen, O2. The main organelle involved in respiration is the mitochondria. Was that a question of ours? Sometimes I forget what the questions even are. Main organelle involved in respiration is the mitochondria. Oops, too far. The enzymatic reactions of cellular respiration begin in the cytoplasm, but most of the reactions occur in the mitochondria. Okay, glycolysis. Uh, glycolysis is the anaerobic phase of cellular respiration which breaks down glucose into two molecules of pyruvate. Glycolysis is the metabolic pathway that converts glucose into pyruvate and a hydrogen ion. The free energy released in this process is used to form ATP and NADH. Glycolysis is a sequence of 10 enzyme catalyzed reactions. Most monosaccharides, such as fructose and galactose, can be converted to one of these intermediates. Uh, pyruvic acid can be made from glucose through gly glycolysis, converted back to carbohydrates, such as glucose, via glucogenesis, or to fatty acids through a reaction with acetyl-CoA. Okay, jumping to the Krebs cycle, which also can be referred to as the citric acid. Citric acid cycle is a series of chemical reactions used by all aerobic organisms to release stored energy through the oxidation of acetyl-CoA derived from carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. In addition, the cycle provides precursors of certain amino acids, as well as the reducing agent NADH that are used in numerous other reactions. And next, we want to talk a little bit about the electron transport chain, which pumps electrons across the membrane to create a protein gradient. Electrons also move from one carrier molecule, molecule to the next. Oxidative phosphorylation is the production of ATP using energy from the electron transport chain. This produces the most ATP during cellular respiration. About 32 ATP are produced during oxidative phosphorylation compared to only 2 ATP during glycolysis and 2 ATP during the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. Uh, NAD plus carries electrons to the electron transport chain from the Krebs cycle. NAD carries electrons to the electron transport chain from glycolysis and the, and the Krebs cycle. And then finally with uh, fermentation, 
fermentation only generates ATP if there is an adequate supply of NAD+. The NAD+, has to be present in order to accept the electrons. And uh, lactic acid fermentation happens when one is undergoing exercise. Lactic acid builds up during fermentation, causing muscles to cramp up. And with that, we get right back into our four questions. So this is a great time to hit that pause button and see how you can do on answering these questions on your own.